Hi everyone. Today I am going to take you through the under braider attachment. Although technically it's not an attachment because it's not attaching to your presser foot. This actually is more like a guide, like a seam guide, and it's going to attach to the bed of your machine. So I have two, a clip on one and one that it uses a seam guide screw. This one, if you do have this type of plate, it will fit by sliding in, clipping in um, on your throat plate. This one in particular is for a full size machine, which means in theory, this will fit a 66K, a Singer 15K, um, I'm using a 201K. You can see from the underside that there are little brackets and a little nub so it literally just you pull out your plate and you cl clip that in and engage that little oops, sorry that little nub with the hole on your throat plate this is a good guide this is a good underbraided guide i find with this one possibly because it's a, a little bit bent or well used uh it's a it's a bit wobbly and that nub can disengage with the hole. So the underbraider, the principle of the underbraider is to guide your braid. So you need it to be fixed and not moving at all. I actually prefer this type of underbraider because you're screwing it down into the bed of the machine. So it's not gonna go anywhere. I don't actually have any braid. I have searched in my box of fabricy junk stuff and I do not have any braid. However, you can use the under braid up with knitting wool or string. I'm actually going to do today's demo with, um, it's like a twine, that's good stuff. Uh, so that will work as well. But what you also need is a quilting foot. And the reason for that is when you're under braider is clipped in and I'll set this up in a minute when it's clipped in to your machine the, oops that guide there which is guiding your braid or string or wool it's guiding it and it's directly next to your needle so if I fit mine in and I show I get you up close that's how close the guide is. Let me use a pointy thing. That's how close it is to your needle. Now, if you were using a normal presser foot, and if let's pretend that's on, that's actually connected in, it's going to hit your braider, and we don't want that. So what we need is the quilting foot because, oh, sorry, let me, just get you back on. There you go. Right, that's better. So, the quilting foot has little tiny toes compared to this foot, which has big long toes. So, the quilting foot, because it's got tiny little toes, it can be fitted to your machine without having an impact on your braider. I'm going to take the quilting, the actual guide off, so we're just using the foot. So I am going to put the foot on first, and I will show you how cool this attachment or this guide is. So what I found with my one, and you might find this with yours as well, if I just screw that straight in to the bed of the machine, it's still a bit wobbly, or it... it shifts a bit and you want your attachment your guide to be so fixed to your machine that there is no play or movement at all two reasons you want it to go in straight but also any sort of shift or movement possibly will compromise with your needle and you don't want your needle hitting this plate at all because it's so close to your needle so let me just move this one out of the way what I'm going to do, and if you were using braid, you wouldn't necessarily need to do this, but because I'm using twine, I am going to... Oh, do I want to lick the twine? I'm going to have to lick it. 
Right, so I'm going to thread it badly on camera. Oh, I might have to do this off camera actually. Oh, let me do it off camera. Right, try that again. <laughs> so I had to do that off camera because it was just faffy. So I have pre-threaded my my string, but this could be your braid. I've pre-threaded it just because it's a bit awkward trying to thread it while it's on the machine, but braid, I believe, slides in quite beautifully. So let's get that set up. Now I use, because mine doesn't actually fit too well, I've created this little washer. I can thread my bolt through, and let's get it attached. I, I find just the little bit of felt just helps to strengthen the it locking down. So let's get that locked in. Okay, let's pull off a little bit of braid. It's a bit faffy to start with. No, nope, I've faffed that. Hang on. All right, try that again. It's, I didn't actually engage it properly. I'm, so I'm just going to show you up close and also with the, the quilt foot. So if I put my foot down, you can see just how close this guide is to the needle here and why the quilting foot actually works brilliantly because it's not, that quilting foot is not engaging at all with this guide. Um, the other reason why I particularly like this style is because if I can lock that down really, really tight. If you've got one that's got a little bit of play, you risk, because of this section here, you risk any, if it moves ever so slightly, your needle is going to hit into that and then you're going to have a broken needle. So have a look at the one that you've got and just make sure that it's completely screwed down or clipped in very tight. So braiding. What this does, and because it's more of a guide than it is an, as an, uh, compared to an attachment, it is guiding your braid through. So I don't have to think about what my braid is doing because it's literally feeding through dead straight and extremely accurate. I just messed up my tension then. It's going in dead straight. So I can concentrate without having to worry about my braid and how it's feeding in compared to say the bias binding tape, I can just let that do its thing and I can concentrate on what I am sewing. Now, with braiding, you're sewing upside down. So you actually, you actually, and this is an example. So this is an example of using the braider and I used knitting wool for this. But you're sewing upside down so if you are doing something like letter writing, uh, say on, on bunting, everything is in reverse. So the way you stitch is in reverse or it's, it's mirrored. So if you are doing something like lettering, remember you are going to write everything backwards. And then when you turn it over, it's correct. I haven't tried letter writing yet. I will try that at some point. But that's that's the one thing to remember. You are sewing the the wrong side of the fabric and you can't you're you're sewing blind essentially so I've got a piece of calico because you know I love a bit of calico and I just have so much of it <laughs> so it's good as a demonstration and I am going to do a quick drawing using string but you can you if you've got braid you can use braid if you don't know what braid is braid is a bit like so i've got some rickrack you can see kind of how rickrack is made braid is the same type of uh fabric a bit like a ribbon but it's straight and it usually has a pretty design on it and you can get them in different widths and it's all very lovely but it's a bit, that's probably the closest I've got to braid. But unfortunately, because it's rickrack, it doesn't feed in at all. I tried. It doesn't feed in. Right. Let me have a go now to do a 
drawing with braid. So I've drawn out a little sketch because that that's always helpful if you're if you're doing something unless you're doing something like this, which is just straight straight straight. It's good to have a drawing. It just helps helps you to know where you're going. So I'm going to focus on my drawing. I am not worrying at all about the braid because that's what the attachment is doing. Let me just make sure I've got enough thread. So let's get that under. And let's have a quick go. So I'm now a bit like, it's not free motion embroidery, but I'm using my pencil drawing and I can spin, you can spin your fabric, you can do lots of things because the braid will just continue to feed. Oh, she says that and then it's jamming a little bit. No, it's fine. Probably because I'm using thick hessian wool. And you'll see what it looks like after. Probably the worst thing to try and draw on camera the first time ever because I've not done this drawing before but I looked at it and thought oh, that should be easy so, watch my struggles people and then you know what not to do there you go let's spin it that way probably doesn't help that there's a bolt going under there And I'm using its thick twine. What I'm not doing is worrying at all about the braid because the guide, the under braider guide, is doing that bit for me. Ah, I'm struggling with the turn because I think my string is quite thick, although it fits into the the braid okay. I'm gonna let me spin it round. I'm almost finished, I promise. I wanted to try and braid something quite cool on video, uh, as opposed to just doing some rectangles. But that might have been a bad choice for me. So I'm at a point where I'm actually gonna braid on top of braid. No, I can't say braid because I'm not using braid. I'm gonna sew string on top of string, but it will still allow that to work. It. You can see how I'm negotiating, but my actual, I'm not paying attention at all to the braid because the braid is being guided in um, separately. So let me just carry on going round. It does help. Well, I'm I'm using a treadle. I think this would be a little bit more awkward if you were hand cranking, unless you were doing straight lines, but um, a treadle or electric machine will work quite nicely because you can use both hands. Although you can, even you can see I'm having to lift, stop, lift, stop. And that's because I'm getting towards the end. And then let's finish off. Okay, scissors, let's have a look. So I've, in, I've lifted up the needle because I found this, this can be a bit tricky because when I pull my fabric away, I'm, also, I'm pulling away because I'm going to cut the threads, but it's going to pull some of this braiding through it's like that. So I'm just going to clip all of it and I can leave that still in for now. And then I'm going to just cut my threads and I'm going to do that off camera so that you guys can see what I made. And it looks pretty as a little surprise. And there you go. That looks quite cool actually. So I just Googled kind of free, free drawings, um, like single line drawings. And I've created a kitty cat. But this is, the, and, that, and that's the thing. So I haven't, this is what makes the braider cool, even if you're not using braid. 
because you can now draw something or you can do a motif. It, it could be a neckline around a garment. You can kind of focus, if I turn it this way, you can focus just on the stitching because the guide itself is feeding your braiding in. So you don't have to, compared to say if you had braiding and you were trying to sew this way and stitch on top, you would have to hold your braiding straight or guide your braiding round into different angles whilst also trying to do that stitch. And this little fella is doing that for you. So it's a really cool thing to have if you have if you're doing some sort of braiding thing but there's my little kitty cat i'll have to give him a name like gary or something but that's what you can create if i was doing a letter obviously you would have to write your letter backwards because it's on the underside uh, but on the wrong side so that when you flip your letter is the right way up but it, it's pretty cool it's a, it's a really cool attachment and with this particular one you if you get yourself you cut yourself a little bit of fed or a uh, little bit of felt or a little piece of fabric just to create a washer and that holds it down really tight but it's a cool little thing <laughs>